In this video, we are going to look at transformation of functions. And so um, what that means is every function starts with a parent function or a base function. And when we're working with transformation of functions, you have to be able to identify the parent function you started with. And then from there, you have to be able to identify how your function moved. Okay, so there is, and you can find it by doing just a simple Google search, um, many, many pictures like this one that are listed of what are called parent functions. They are the most basic functions that we have. So for example, your constant function, linear, absolute value, quadratic, square root, cubic, cube root, and the reciprocal irrational. Now, these top eight functions are kind of like the most um, well-known or well-used functions. These uh, bottom ones, the rational logarithmic exponential, um, these would be the next that are used, but more when we're looking at some uh, higher level math. And then we have step functions and finally your trig. And so if you take a look at all of these, these would all be considered to be your parent functions. The ones that we focus on though are, like I said, these top um, eight ones right in here. So when you're identifying a parent function, you would identify the parent function as say being absolute. So it would be the um, absolute value of x. Or that it's quadratic, so it would be x squared. The translation then comes from all the other stuff that surrounds your function. Like for example, we have this first one here. So if you look, I have a cubed root of x plus 5 minus 2. So if I want to identify my parent or base function, I have to look at what is the most basic concept that's being, um, or that occurs here. And in this case, it would simply be the cubed root of x. Okay, so x is the variable I'm using and then everything else is added on to it. So with that, I have to identify what each of these parts means. So first and foremost, we can work with your um, horizontal ideas. So the way that I like to remember them is that your horizontal, these are the ones that are done inside um, your function, okay? So they're the ones that are done underneath the radical, inside of parentheses, okay? They are closest to your variable. Your vertical, these are the ones that are done outside. So they would be on the outer side, or, you know, outside that radical, outside your parentheses. Um, they are the ones that are, you know, just that, done on the outermost side. So when you're looking at a function like this, we have this plus 5 here on the inside of my radical. So this is actually going to be a horizontal shift. Now I know it's a shift because I'm adding the 5, okay? So because I'm adding or subtracting a constant, to my variable that tells me it's a shift. The horizontal tells me I'm moving left or right. In this case, I'm going to be moving to the left and I'm going to go five units. That's what it's called. Okay. Now I have to deal with this two. The minus two is on the outermost side of the radical. So this in this case would be a um, a vertical and here it's a shift again because we're adding or subtracting so in this case we're going to shift down two units okay so we can actually graph that so let's start graphing a few things just so you can see first we're going to graph the parent function and so here when you do that one of the things I recommend you do is um, use colors or um, different types of lines to distinguish them. So we're going to do my parent and in my parent I'm going to go ahead and graph it in blue here. 
So we're doing the cubed root of x. So first and foremost, it's going to cut here through um, the origin. And then we're going to have a point here at 1, 1 and another one at 1, negative 1. And so what happens here is that this is going to go up and it's going to kind of curve and get really close to 2 and then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to come down here, curve, and get really close to 2. And so this right here is my f of x equals the cubed root of x. So I also recommend if you're not going to say change colors or change your lines, um, you label your graphs. Now the next one that I'm going to graph is going to be the horizontal shift and I'm going to go ahead and do that in this um, kind of greenish color. And so here we are shifting to the left. So you're going to take these points and we're going to move them left five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So this point is going to end up right here. I have to take this and go one, two, three, four, five. So it goes right here. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph that as well. So again, we're going to come up like this. And we're going to come down like this. And this one here is f of x equals the cubed root of x plus 5. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do that vertical shift. So we're going to move everything down two units. So in this case we're going to come from where we just were, so from the green line, and we're going to come down one, two. So it goes here. We're going to go one, two, here, and then one, two, down to here. Now in this case, instead of approaching my two like we did before, here we're going to be um, kind of approaching towards uh, my, let's see, towards the one. And so here we're going to We're going to kind of come down, kind of like that, and then this one's going to kind of come up, and it's going to kind of go like that, and here this is my final, f of x equals the cubed root of x plus 5 minus 2. And that's all that there is to it. It's just a rough estimate or a rough guess as to what your graph is going to look like. All right, let's look at another one here. Alright, so here we've got my function and it's 1 minus the absolute value of 4 minus x. Now the first thing that I would do here is I would rearrange my equation so that I can see my translations a little better. So by rearranging, essentially what I'm doing is identifying what my translations are in a much easier way. Okay. So just by um, rearranging your terms, you can better pick out what's going on here. So here, my parent is going to be the absolute value of x. From here, I have a horizontal shift. I'm going to shift left by four units. I also have a horizontal reflection. And that means going to be over the y-axis. Okay, that's what this negative piece means right here. 
Now I need to look at my verticals. So here I've got a negative on the outside as well. So this tells me that I have a vertical reflection. And this is going to be over the x-axis. And then last I have this plus one. So this is going to be a, a vertical shift. And we're going to go up one. <coughs> so here I have actually got four shifts that we have to do and one parent. And we're going to put all of those into the graph. Okay. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and start with that parent function. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that one in blue like before. So this is just going to be the absolute value. So we start at the origin. And the absolute value is just going to go straight um, up both the positive and the negative. So to try and help, I'm going to go ahead and use my straight edge here. And so we're going to draw this in. Here is my absolute value. And up the other side. And so this right here is going to be my absolute value of x. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to work my way down the list till we get to the very bottom and that will be the very last step we do. So here we have a horizontal shift to the left by 4. So we'll go ahead and do that here in our red. So shifting by 4 says that I'm going to go um, I'm going to go to the left so I'm going to move in this direction one two three and four and so then this is going to be the same each one of these one two three four is going to um, move and so here is my horizontal shift went up here. And it goes in this direction. So my horizontal shift here says that we just did f of x is the absolute value of x plus 4. Okay, that's my horizontal shift. So then I have to do my reflection over the y-axis. So this is my y-axis right here. So essentially what happens is you would fold up your y-axis and so I'm going to take this point and I have to reflect everything over to the other side. So my reflection here, um, let's see, let's go ahead and use this one. So here's my reflection. So if it wasn't the negative 4 to reflect it across my y-axis says it's going to come over here. And so then we're going to have it over on this side. So here is my reflection. And then it's going to go up this way. There we go. And so this here is my f of x is going to be the absolute value of negative x plus 4. Okay, that is the horizontal reflection. So now we have to build, and we're going to build by using our vertical reflection. Okay, so the vertical reflection is the reflection, and I'm going to go ahead and use the purple one for that where we reflect over the x-axis. So we're going to come here to where we are, and now we have to reflect it down. So we're still going to be here at the point um, at 4, but instead now my point is going to be coming down in this direction. So here, we are now going to have this side and this other side. There we go. 
And then just like before, I would go ahead and label this. So here we are now looking at um, f of x is the negative absolute of negative x plus 4. <coughs> and with that, the final one that we have to do is going to be here, this vertical shift. And we'll do that one in orange. So I'm color coding mine to try and help. Now we're going to vertical shift up one. So that means all of our points here have to come up one. So here we're going to be up here and then here and here and again for one final time we can go ahead and draw in our lines so we've got this one and then the other side we've got this one like this and so one last time we can label it this here is going to be f of x is my negative absolute value of negative x plus 4 plus 1. Okay. So what you can see in this graph is that we have moved that parent function from its starting place, the blue line, all the way through all the different translation points until we ended up with the final um, line. Okay, So it is really important while you are working your translations that you focus on how the movement is supposed to go and then you graph it accordingly. Okay, So you always want to make sure that you are graphing all of your movements as you go along because that is one way that for you to be able to double check and make sure that you did not make um, any mistakes as you worked. Okay, So here um, I did all the horizontals first and then I did all the verticals second. If you are working in a program like Hawks, it will be really important that you graph your horizontals first and your verticals second. However, um, you can graph in any order you choose. You will always end up at the same place. Just make sure whatever medium you're using in order to practice these problems that you follow the um, method outline and the order that that medium requests. Okay, So pay very close attention to what it is that you are supposed to do. Otherwise, that's all there is to it with translations. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to let me know. If you're working on a translation yourself and you are just stuck on what to do, um, feel free to send those to me. I'd be more than happy to take a look and try and help give you some pointers. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.